Hello, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Rob. And together we are Anti Anti Dusk. Dusk. Woohoo! And we are following the fabulous, fabulous Chronicles of Downton Abbey. <laughs> and we are following episode five of series one. Marvellous. Mm-hmm. Marvellous. Well, <laughs> how so- marvellous is that? <laughs> oh. So we have a bouquet of intriguing events. We do, we do. Uh, so let's dig, dig into the episode and the petals and thorns of this oh, episode. See what, see what you did yeah, there. Yeah, I know. Amazing, amazing. So, <laughs> run VT. <laughs> <laughs> so, it starts off with regards to the discussions of Downton Village Flower Show. Yes. Mm. Mm. There's nothing like a flower show to to get pulses racing, is there? No. And it, uh, it's Matthew's mummy um, is very impressed um, with Mr. Mosley's father's roses. Yes. Um, because it's the yes. w- most well-tended Bouquet, or was it? Was it was blo- bloom, 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 bloom of the year, bloom of the year, bloom of the year, or something like something like that. And yes, it, and, and it becomes very apparent, very quickly, that the dowager <laughs> has won it every single every year. Every single year since since Queen Victoria was um, a mere <laughs> child. Yes, uh, and nothing suspicious about that at all, is there? That's a perfectly reasonable <laughs> thing to expect. <laughs> no. And so the dowager is questioned. Um, so, oh well, so it's the best blooms. So, my well, gardens are the yeah, best. They blooms. are. They are objectively the best because I get the prize every month, every year. <laughs> every year, I get the prize. They must be the best. Hmm, um, I wonder. Matthew's mama is a slightly dubious. Yes. Dubious about that. That there might be some. Um, I'm going to use some French here. Doigt de Seigneur. I probably <laughs> pronounced that incorrectly. Doigt de Seigneur. Doigt de Seigneur. Isn't Seigneur a Spanish? Um, no. <laughs> well, it is, yes, yeah. It's but, a Spanish, it's, but it's yeah. also in French. Oh, right. And uh, the droit de seigneur is the is the rights that are exer- exerted by oh. by the the landed gentry, gentry. over the over their sub- subjects. So the 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 uh, uh, <laughs> the flower show which they they host. They fund. pay for presumably and pay for <laughs> they and, win and uh, and patron oh, was it? yes in the cup which was if I remember the episode correctly was actually donated by uh, Lord Grantham's father so that would be Lady <laughs> uh, Lady Lady Violet's husband so so there yes. you go so yes so um, Violet and <laughs> so so she she rig- vigorously defends her corner but um yeah but not not only does cousin isabel uh reference the fact that she always wins but but then so does the the rest of the family as well I, you know lord <laughs> grantham sort of it's a alludes to the fact that um <laughs> that, that her winning might not entirely be down to the quality of her blooms yes I mean, oh she, she's she's a little bit aghast at that and said well the gardener does a very good job <laughs> I'd be very disappointed. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, that that is the element of uh, jollity with regards to this episode. It's so you're saying the rest of the episode is, is full of gloom and despondency. There's a lot that's going on in this. Ep- Again, this is another one of these episodes where bucket loads actually happens. Mm. Oh, and there's another positive thing where Lady Sybil, after last week's wearing her yeah. bloomers. I have to say, Lady Sybil is def- definitely coming into her own. Front and centre, isn't she? No, and I, I'm, warming, I'm warming to her, um, definitely. So I can see that she, her heart is definitely in the right place, unlike some of her siblings. But we'll come on to that yes. in a moment. So I, because Sybil, Sybil has actually <laughs> applied for a job for Gwen. Um. So and yes. uh, oh, without Gwen knowing, yes. <laughs> so basically, basically, what she's done is that she's she's written to someone saying, "I heartily recommend Gwen." Um. Blah blah blah. Downton Abbey. Blah blah blah. Yes. Uh, so on and so forth. And um. Yeah. Gwen gets uh gets invited to to an interview, but. How's How she, she going to get there? <laughs> so, I wonder. So Gwen has a touch of the vapors, and uh, while making making a bed. Yeah. So so yeah. So Sybil and Gwen they come up with a plan, a plan of feigned illness um, for, Gwen. for Gwen, and a feigned In, trip to a, an elderly. Friend or something oh, of that uh, nature. So in, in the horse and trap, the yes. governor's horse the, and the trap. The governess's um, 
horse trap. I can't really imagine a governess riding a horse and trap, but clearly... Well, it, we was... haven't actually seen a governess. I don't think that's just... No, there, well, is, there is one around. No, and, um, well, Sybil definitely doesn't want a governess. She made she made her views on that very plain and So I don't need episode. to learn how to curtsy and speak French. No, <laughs> she needs to learn to do trigonometry and... Um, <laughs> By, yes. by all the and unfortunately, things. in this episode, there was no sign of her bloomers. Maybe they're only coming out in high days and holidays for best wear. Well, I don't think we'll ever see them again. They they were worn for their specific <laughs> outing and then have probably been... <laughs> relegated. Been, yeah, either relegated or donated to the poor. <laughs> yes, so they're going to be... A bit, the poor one. A them. very stylish, poor... Reminds me of an episode of uh, Ab, Ab Fab when uh, Adina's mother donates a lot of a wardrobe and Adina walks walks down the road and finds a homeless person wearing Vivian Westwood mask. <laughs> <laughs> so, so La Croix, sweetie, La Croix. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so, um, so they, there's a plan. So that Sybil is going to transport Gwen to her to her interview in a horse and buggy. Yes. What can so, go wrong? Yeah, so the, the horse and so they go on a horse and buggy to the local town and uh, I say, they're all sort of a jolly jape, and uh, Gwen is wearing one of Sybil's sort of cast offs. Fortunately, not the, the baggy pantaloons. <laughs> the pantaloons. Um, and sort of, she goes to have her interview. You don't see much of her interview, it just seems rather stern and sort of stuffy offices with well, chairs. Well, to be fair, not as stern and stuffy as Downton Abbey. No. Downstairs. No. So, so she, she goes along that, and on the way back, um, the horse goes lame. Yes, it sheds a sheds a shoe, or yes, shoes a shed. So I lo- lost lo- lost a shoe, and unfortunately, the local ironmongery place, the chap is in. I mean, the blacksmith. The, yes, well, an ironmonger as well. Cause that, well, he mongered iron. He mongered, so but unfortunately, he wasn't around. So they have no, to they have to plod <laughs> on, to plod on, and walk back with a very reluctant. <laughs> Horse. horse and then there's like <laughs> so another comical moment so the comical moments in this episode are really very good because they're they're pushing this buggy out of the uh, a muddy a muddy sort of um lane and the, <laughs> the horse moves on quickly by, by um, being threatened and being boiled down for glue by sybil so she, she, she knows how to work things does does dear Sybil, and they fall flat on their face with and like lots mud. of mud. Oh. But we don't actually see how they get up the stairs. And, no. and but there's in. a lot of worry and consternation in the house for Sybil's uh, whereabouts. Pro- yes, her prolonged absence is, is is being being remarked upon. But as you say, we don't see them arriving home. All we have is that, that Anna goes into her bedroom, and there's there's a rather uh, crestfallen looking Gwen. Gwen already in bed. Um, uh, uh, clearly, Anna has known uh, for she, some time that she wasn't she wasn't ill. She wasn't ill in her bed. No. Um, but um, yeah, so she managed to get herself back in the house. Don't know. Don't know about Sybil, but certainly uh, Gwen got herself back into the house without being spotted. Probably leaving a massive trail of mud. Yeah. Um, so behind I, so her. She, but I mean, so she admits she's been to, she's been to a job interview. This is what I really love about Downton Abbey. So they, they, I mean, some people would have been quite lazy and created high jinks of wandering around in mud and avoiding things. But it's, it, it happens off screen and it's just referred to in a sentence so they can get on with the story, which I think is really, I love, I love that element of it because... Cause I well, think it some keeps people, it moving, doesn't it? It, it does. Keep, because in, if this was being made in the 1970s, then we would have seen every agonising moment of Sybil and Gwen's. So of, that would have been an entire home. episode. That would, been, that would have been an entire episode of Upstairs Downstairs. Oop. I said it and I just didn't mean to say it. <laughs> um, of, of another drama of a similar uh, subject matter. Yeah, so uh, so, uh, so Gwen, sort of the Gwen storyline, she went for the job interview and at the end of this episode, we discover that she was not successful. But never mind. Never mind. So never she, mind. So, so I think that's really quite good. And there's another element of levity which Gwen was involved with. Da- Daisy is feeling a little bit spooked. Daisy, the housemaid, is yes. Yeah, so Daisy, poor Daisy, she has post-traumatic. Um, well, she doesn't know stress. what she's seen. She saw something moving. She saw something nasty. She saw something, <laughs> something na- nasty, nasty in the woodshed. Yeah, well, na- something nasty in the corridor. So when the whole Mr. Pamuk situation happened, she saw something, but she doesn't know what she's actually seen. And um, she's a little bit... 
apprehensive yeah. of, so she has, of she Scary has Mary's little, room. Yeah, yeah, so she has a little bit of a, a moment when she's um, making the fire in, in Lady Mary's room, thinking about, or wondering, I suppose, about what what all that was and Mr. Pamuk's death. And it kind of brings back thoughts of the the, the Titanic uh, sinking and the loss of is that, I mean, she, so she's, she's feeling she's feeling a little bit wobbly, yeah. Um, and it, they say Gwen and Anna ask her, "Are you, are you feeling okay now?" It's so when they're all around the big like, oak table in the kitchen, and she's just like shelling peas or something. Um, and she's a little bit, "Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay." She's trying to trying to dismiss it, but uh, always looking for a bit of gossip. Thomas asked her, and she can't resist the delights of Thomas and then it sort of comes out that she saw something there and now it becomes apparent that Thomas saw something no the, no Thomas didn't, hasn't seen anything or, um, or Thomas, Thomas and O'Brien have been um, speculating wildly about what might have happened and they had an idea that um, that Mr. Pamuk didn't die in his own bed. bed and so when daisy starts talking about what she may or may not have seen that's definitely grist to their mill and confirms mm. confirms things that they'd already been wondering and as it turns out uh, thomas has committed to to writing to, to another valet in to, london to write to a, a gossipy valet in a, london a who loose lips loose lips sink Chips. And I think with the gossip from the valets also there seems to be an element of um, gossip that's going around uh, Evelyn who was sort of in line as a suitor yeah. for Scary Mary. So it's a bit of a perfect storm for Mary because simultaneously there's gossip about her potential lack of chastity, shall we yes. say. And at the same time, Viv, uh, Evelyn Napier is making it known that he is no longer pursuing uh Mary. lady mary so and she's, putting, he's going for one of the, uh, another uh, another yeah. lady somewhere so putting two and two together and i can only imagine what the gossip circles in edwardian london might have been like but putting those two and two together there is a an idea beginning to develop in society that uh lady mary is damaged goods because Lord Crawley's sister has written a letter saying that there's an element of gossip, and he's sort of discounted because he doesn't know anything about it. Sort of, he's sort of, no, no, no. Lady, I say Mary is very virtuous, virtuous, and what have you. But Cora, so he confides in Cora, and Cora says, "Oh, right, okay. Um, well, we do need to find her husband, and that now and the husband, the husband, we need to do it rather, rather, rather sooner, swiftly, to, sooner rather to than nip later. This in in the bud." So they've got a dinner party planned uh, with a, a gentleman who have, who's closer to, 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 to Lord Grantham's age than, than Mary. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. So anyway, so we were talking about Daisy. So Daisy's, Daisy's trauma. Um, and as, I guess smelling blood in the water, mm -hmm. uh, O'Brien and Thomas then um, start to dig dig a little dig, bit dig more into it but daisy's not giving anything away so o'brien um, pulls out a trump card mm -hmm. and obviously she's very well aware of the tensions between mary and edith. edith so so gets edith then involved in trying to winkle the truth the wooden spoon award goes to yes. <laughs> so so we have a scene where edith um really you know manipulates daisy mm. into into telling edith. what and telling edith what, what she thought what she, she saw th she thought she saw and and, and daisy's a, quite a vulnerable person yeah. she's being bullied in this episode a little bit I mean, she's been bullied by mrs partmore really since since, since day one episode, oh, episode and i think one, it's, I, it's I, getting it's definitely getting but we'll come on to that maybe in just yeah, a moment so, but, so we'll come on to the uh, but mrs. yes partmore. but 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 Daisy is definitely feeling vulnerable, and I think Edith uh, takes advantage of that vulnerability, pretends to be more of a friend than I think we could say she really, really is. Really is. I mean, she starts the scene by not even knowing Daisy's name, <laughs> let alone her. So it's Daisy, isn't it? Which, given that um, 
they, they must have been having a conversation about her with with Miss O'Brien. It's mm. a little bit, a little bit of a stretch, but and never mind. So, um, but, so, but, so, so Daisy confides in Edith. Edith has got a bit of a beef with Ma- with Mary because in this ep- I'll say th- this episode is a little bit different from previous episodes because. So previously we were doing the upstairs and downstairs, but this episode we've got quite a lot of them crossover. Intermingling. They're, they're intermingling. Um, so Edith and Mary are sort of, there seems to be lots of barbed comments. Yeah, so we get, we get a reference early on, a reminder that, that Edith sort of threw her cap at Matthew. And um, politely declined. And was politely declined because Matthew's uh, mother, Isabel, is... Sort of saying, oh well, we have to we have to arrange the the return date for for visiting churches, mm-hmm. um, which I don't think there'd be very really very much enthusiasm from yeah. Edith because she was just using that as a as a reason to spend time with Matthew. Didn't didn't go didn't go anywhere. Then of course we have the the the, the dinner party mm. where uh, this gentleman has been invited as a potential suitor for Mary. Mary is completely disinterested and spends most of the dinner party Giggling conversing with Matthew. with Matthew, leading Matthew to think that oh maybe there's oh, something. Because I, mean, I think Matthew here. has a bit of a spark yeah. Um, for, yeah. for for Mary, and I think yeah. Mary has got a spark because they had a scene at the uh, the, the preparation for the for the um, the flower show, and he's offering say he's going to the cottages. So. Mary's been having lots of opportunities mm. to, to actually spend some time with Matthew. Yeah. And I think she's slowly warming up. So he offers, oh, sorry, I'm looking at the cottages. Didn't actually give a formal offer to, to go to the cottages yeah. with her, but she could have opened up that. And then there was a second yeah. time where at the dinner party, they said, oh, I'm going to have the cottages. And so and, and they're giggling together because there was a, yeah. there was a big frou-haw. Uh, so the gentleman, I can't remember the name of the gentleman, it was like Lord something or other. This is Antique Dust from the future. Lady Mary's suitor is Sir Anthony Strallen. Um, and but he was a, 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 one of the, the posh... Yeah. Our research is just yeah. phenomenal, yeah. isn't he, he, So we've, we've recognised him from um, the uh, TV series called Cold Feet, about some yuppies in Manchester. Well, to be clear, you recognised him from Cold Feet. I recognised him from Toast of London, but... Right, but that's a whole other that's, that's a whole, that's a whole other, other podcast. Um, so uh, he's he's qu- quite a bore, and he's very into land management, etc. And sort of uh, sort of la- uh, sort of Lady Mary is is disinterested, but coming up with all the platitudes. And then there's a, a situation with Miss Patmore where she accidentally puts salt on uh, the the dessert, which should be a sugary sort of. Yeah. She, she mistook the the salt for the sugar. Well, she missed all the sugar for the, the salt. Oh, yeah, yeah, the salt. Yeah, yeah. For the sugar, yeah. So, and he sort of like, he sort of makes a big gaff. <laughs> so, and um, say so all the puddings are swiftly dispatched, sort of dispatched and, and replaced with fruit. And fruit and cheese. And cheese. So, yes. um, um, but mean, meanwhile, during, during the course of the, the dinner party, Edith has been, has been conversing interestedly with, Sir Anthony Strallen yeah, across candlelight, across, yeah, cr- with, and yeah, and and uh, Mary's looking, you know, you know, it's, it's so just such a classic, isn't it? It's classic sibling rivalry. rivalry. Um, Mary doesn't want, but doesn't like to see Edith, Edith have doing wanted. doing well, and then this all comes to a to a, to a head after after dinner. Once the whole um, salt on the pudding fiasco has been dealt so with and the the ladies have withdrawn to the drawing room the gentlemen are having port in the and they're, they're, in they're the coming room. in I don't, I don't know. and matthew's with the chap and lady and so just before they arrive edith's saying well i quite like him and da, 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 da. and mary says well i can have him if i want to and and then water makes a barbed comment with matthew declining her offer and and edith reacts badly and Mary says, "Well, I can have anyone I like." And the moment the gentlemen come in, Matthew is with the the the, the, the older lord, and uh, she goes up and is very convivial and refers to a book. And Edith's left in her wake. Yeah. But also, Matthew's yeah. nose has been put out of yeah. joint. So, so, so Mary does the worst possible thing that she she starts engaging conversation, 
and Matthew thinks her comments are aimed towards him. him, but actually they're not. And she sort of sweeps past him, leaving very crestfallen, um, grabs onto Lord Duda, um, and, and Edith then tries to continue their conversation, but she is excluded, um, and everyone is left feeling mm. rather Matthew disgruntled. Sort of bows Math- out. Matthew feigns illness and leaves immediately, and then as soon as Mary clocks his departure, she suddenly she real. suddenly realizes something. And as Lord Grantham puts it, um, she had to learn that when she puts something down, she can't always expect it to be there when she wants to pick it up again. Like a discarded toy. I I really like that comment. Yes. And and so Mary is is used to getting her own way, but I think with Matthew, she's got an equal. Yeah. um, Which is... Which is very, very interesting. So, um, but Lady, uh, so Edith is, nose has been well and truly yeah. popped out of uh, jock. Yeah. And Edith overhears a conversation between uh, Cora and Mary, where they're actually perhaps unwisely talking r- quite openly about the whole Mr. Pamuk um, incident. So, whatever Mary, whatever Edith might have. Suspect. thought and suspected on the back of what um, has now Daisy been said that's now all been confirmed and her plan to ruin Mary, Mary. Uh, so she, comes so, to fruition so, she, so we see a scene with her writing uh, a letter and, and we sort of the, the, end of the, uh, the end credits come with her uh, it's a letter to the so, so, so His the Excellency, Excellency the, the Turkish, Turkish Ambassador, Ambassador. Um, Belgravia Square. So she's that's a very silly thing for her to do. I mean, it's going to get the sort of, it's a, it'll be a, a complete smack in the right direction um, to get to get one over on Mary. However, what will the cost? But the cost of that, she's not really thought it through because it costs the family the standing, and that's just not very good no. so I mean, that, that's how that story of propelled with um, uh, Mary and Edith and Daisy and uh, there was a nice little scene with Daisy because when so Gwen and Anna are sort of trying to sort of mother her a little bit because they're seeing how badly treated she's being by Mrs. Patmore Mrs. Patmore is is really sort of kicking out at her um, because she's the closest thing to her, and and she's an easy target. And she's an easy target, and sort of, uh, sort of Daisy's sort of sort of slept in, and to, and they get they're giving her a biscuit from um, sort of Lady Edith's or Sybil's biscuit, biscuit barrel, biscuit which jar, are, which are never gets never gets eaten, it just gets thrown out every night and and, re- and replenished. So she's there, sort of like nibbling at a biscuit, and Mister Carson comes in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, this is and and Gwen. This is when Gwen, Gwen has feigned the, the illness, illness so she can go to her interview. So he sees her. <laughs> so Gwen sat sat on the bed doing her theatrics. Um, I said, "What do you do on the bed?" And then, <laughs> then looks looks at Daisy cradling <laughs> cradling yeah. the biscuit yeah. barrel. I was polishing it. Fortunately, well, there was no crumbs. Yeah, coming fortunately, <laughs> she she managed to swallow. She choked down the the last of the crumbs and uh, just well see that you. But do. Anna takes control of that conversation because I mean Anna's a strong is a strong character. Yeah. And clearly she's been in she's been in service for what well, probably most of her, her life. So she knows how things work. Mm-hmm. And I think she knows how people work, work as well. So she's she's a good person in that house to have on your have yeah. on your side. So um and so the, 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 so there is that. Now well, the beginning part of the episode, I know we're bouncing around this episode, um Mr Mr. Bates walks in um, to Mr. Carson's sort of area and spots Thomas lifting 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 a bottle of wine. Yes. Now, we know from a previous episode... Two other bottles have gone missing. ...that um, Mr. Carson is um, concerned that there seems to be discrepancies in in the cellar Mm. records. And now we know why... That that um, that he's been that lifting bottles. Yeah, Thomas has been helping himself to the Chateauneuf de Pape. 
yes. and the 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 fine fine Bordeaux from the Old Medoc. <laughs> Yes, dear listeners, we are starting our wine exams later on this this month, and uh, so Rob has been studying profusely. I've not really cracked. You've open not cracked open the damn book. book. You've you've popped open a few corks, but I don't. Think, <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that. I, I, I'm trying to immerse myself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Last night, yesterday's sort of uh, festivities in the back garden. It's been, so, dear listeners, this is we're, we're at the start of summer. It's a very English summer. Um, and in Cheshire, on the Cheshire Plain, it's been very delightfully warm. Our sun-dappled garden through the pergola, entertaining friends, the clink of crockery, and sort of like yeah. slurring of words and yeah. tripping just over. Imagine <laughs> yeah. just, just imagine Downton Abbey, but with more alcohol. <laughs> and fewer guests. And fewer guests. <laughs> So, and, less, and less post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. <laughs> unless, so, the, unless the wine fridge is empty, then there's lots of stress. Yes. yes. Um, so, so we got the, there's the, the unanswered question. There is how much did Mr. Bates actually see? see? And if he did see enough, what's he going to do about it? So, and the uh, Cora's lady's maid um, comes up with um, a little. I, mean, I was really quite surprised, actually, because uh, what's the name of Mrs. O'Brien? Miss O'Brien. Miss O'Brien um, is sort of spots Thomas, who's skulking in the back stairs, smoking a cigarette, um, and she says, "What you'd so down for?" And sort of, and then he, he freely admits to her that he's been lifting a bottle of wine. Yeah, but he he thinks that Mr. Beats will have clocked that, and that gives them then. If they needed, if they needed any further reason to get rid of Mister Bates, mm. that 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 then um, settles the matter. So they come up with a nefarious plan um, to to set, frame him, so, so to frame Mister Bates. Yes. So uh, Lord Grantham is missing a snuff box, a blue snuff box um, that is missing from his glass display, and it was asking where it's gone to, and so sort of Mister Bates. Sort of, oh, I, I don't know, but it soon gets back to Carson, Mr. Yeah. Carson. And he makes an announcement to the staff and say this has been missing because uh, everyone keep an eye out for it. Um, and then Anna, yeah, uh, well, Anna, Anna knows something, something, something's up, and uh, suggests to Mr. Bates that it might be a good idea for him to check to his check room. his room. Uh, she says it in a really nice way. She says, Look, I think you should check your room for it. I said, and she said, oh, I haven't taken that. I said, I know you haven't, but blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, and then Mr. Bates says, realised that Anna isn't isn't as innocent and naive. Oh, well, she's definitely not naive. She's, na- she's definitely not naive. So she suggests, sort of, he finds it in his room um, and then either plants it in Thomas's room or Mrs. O'Brien's room. And he's going, oh, you're wicked, wicked. <laughs> in, a, in a very comical way, yes. Uh, and then once, then what we then come to is that that um, Anna suggests to Mr. Carson that actually, you know what? I think you should shut the rooms. But you know, but this this has all gone long enough. It's casting too many doubts upon things. Let's let's just have the search now. And Mr. Bates says, "Yes, I think that would be a, a very, very good, good idea. idea." And then suddenly, Miss O'Brien and Thomas <laughs> they exchange <laughs> uh, glances, <laughs> and the next thing you know, they're off like uh, whip it, <laughs> because, whip it out of the gate. Because as I, I think they're tiring other people with their own. Because that's exactly what they would have done. done. They would have done what they think mm. that Mr. Bates and Anna have yeah. done. So and uh, it's quite a nice scene where Mrs. O'Brien is there, is searching the rooms. Uh, oh no, not Mrs. no, it's Mrs. Hughes. Is it Mrs. Hughes? Mrs. Hughes is searching the Mrs. rooms, or the uh, ladies, yeah. the ladies' yeah, yes. rooms. Mrs. Hughes is searching uh, and, op- and knocks on the door. Of Mrs. O'Brien's and there's an opens the door, and the, ho- the whole the whole room, room is, is in a is complete, a mess. complete disorder. <laughs> <laughs> We don't. We just. It was just really quite lovely. We don't need to see Thomas's room being so. And if this was done in like 1970s, 1980s, there would have been a whole big thing. It would, this would have been. We'd have had one entire episode of uh, Lady searching, Sybil and searching, Gwen. Yeah, <laughs> another, another episode of searching the house. 
<laughs> Hide and seek. And again, this one's wrapped up off camera where it's just mentioned in the sentence. Oh, um, so Mr. Bates uh, uh, found it in, in a cupboard. It's just been put away incorrectly. Yeah. Um, and then that, that, again, it just wraps it up yeah. really nice yeah. and succinctly. Yeah. And then when they're traipsing to the to the flower show, then uh, Mr. Bates and Anna just have this little bit of a conversation where Anna sort of says, "Oh, what are you hiding? Why, why didn't you put? Why didn't you put the, um, you know, why didn't you put the snuff box in the room?" So well, says, "It's enough that they know. They know. We know that we know, and that's that's sufficient." But then they also then have, as you say, a little bit of a conversation yes. about. So what um, are you hiding? Yes. And Mr. Uh, uh, and Mr. Bates says, uh, so, uh, so, says. It, it's something quite large and it's not something I'd like to to share um, and, and he goes on and uh, shares it nonetheless well I, I, she's, I mean, she, Anna's quite perceptive so yeah. I say are you married I say I was married and uh, and she sort of announces her love Aww. which is quite sort of it's quite a feminist yeah. thing yeah yeah and it did feel like I, I, what I would say is that it did feel like quite a rapid escalation, really. The, mm. You know, the, un, unless there's been stuff that's been going on off camera that we're not, not aware of, it did feel. Like well, they have had it, quite it a long a time together because yeah. in the first episode, it was sort of, that 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 seemed to progress quite a number of months. Yeah. All I'm saying is it did sort of in terms of just in terms of the narrative, it did feel like it sort of came out of nowhere a little bit. Not hugely surprising, no. but but the the strength of her feelings um just felt a little bit surprising. But good on them. Good yeah. on them. So I mean, so I mean that 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 was just that, I mean, that was really nice. I and mean, she's obviously a little bit down sort of downbeat because of it but it doesn't stop their friendship which is very very yes. lovely um so he gets carted off in a cart horse with straw in it because there's yeah. only room for one it looked like there was yeah. plenty of room for a second person and, and given his um disability his limp his limp yeah so that all seems safe uh, face enough so then we have the the climax of the episode. We've got to cover Mrs. Patmore. All right, okay. So the climax is very, very good. So we've got one more thing to cover because Mrs. Patmore has been a bit of a cow. <laughs> she's she's been rather nasty to Daisy because Daisy is like the closest thing to her, um, and has been a little bit nasty. And this has been noted yeah. by. And when anything has gone wrong in the kitchen, she's it's blaming always Daisy. been Daisy's Daisy's fault. Daisy, 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 Daisy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, so we we see the, the start when when the, the um, when the dinner party is being planned. Um, Cora. Cora comes down with a a recipe for an apple charlotte, which um, uh, Mrs. Patmore has never made an apple charlotte. Naturally, you need to do it in a special pan. So we don't even know whether they would have they would have a charlotte pan <laughs> in the in in the kitchen. But anyway. Uh, Mrs. Patmore is very, very uh, reluctant, reluctant uh, to to do something to do something new, and you might well think, just well, maybe she's just a bit of a stick in the mud. And you can and understand that. I mean, so like Cora new. picks her battles yes. appropriately. She so. backs down. I mean, da- on Daisy the says, oh, well, I can read the recipe too, because obviously Daisy knows something is potentially yeah. there. Yeah. So I can read the recipe, and that 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 that's that sort of makes Mrs. Patmore even more cross and she goes for it and then Cora doesn't want to get to create more drama or she doesn't want to be a witness to the drama so she backs down very gracefully and says oh don't worry so they say so maybe next time um so we have that one incident and then there's an incident with one of the grouse that has been been cooked and it sort of Falls on the it falls, falls on, on the ground, the, and, the ground. And, and again, Mrs. Patmore blames Daisy, and Daisy was nowhere near her. Yeah, yeah. And again, so does, but to be fair, it just gets a little bit nibbled by the kitchen cat, so it was, <laughs> it was, it was definitely rescuable. <laughs> so <laughs> once the, once they've beaten the cat off with a stick, <laughs> they, they, they dusted it down, shoved it back on, and it was served. And just pop a bit of parsley over the bite marks; they'll be <laughs> yeah, fine. Be no fine. one will notice. <laughs> Um, and then that's when we have the issue with the meringue and the, the salt. salt going on the meringue, and that gets sent down. Uh, Mrs. Patmore then again tries to blame 
daisy, daisy. for moving things around and, and i say and there's so a lot on. of people downstairs in the in the thing and yeah. mr carson but mr mr carson's not falling falling for it he knows that there's something more yeah. significant up so they have quite a touching have a cut touching, touching scene. scene everyone leaves the kitchen except for mr carson and mrs uh um mrs patmore and they and she admits her sight has been failing her mm. um because there's many things that she she can remember a recipe yeah so she's been focusing on she knows she knows her way around the kitchen mm. she knows where things are and she knows the recipes that she knows mm. but um reading a reading a receipt um, a receipt yes. Receipt, receipt, which is how um, Cora pronounced it, which is how actually yeah. in Edwardian times oh, that was how I've something new there. A receipt, dear receipt. listeners. Receipt. So when you when you go to the shop, when you're whizzing round the the, the 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 your wine merchant, you can ask for the receipt, and then they'll they may not serve you because you pronounce. You wonder what you're wrong. talking about. <laughs> what you um, may think you're because wrong. because language moves on, and we now all say yeah. a recipe, which I guess has a bit of a French influence to it. But anyway, so. Um, so we're now just waiting to hear what the doctor what doctor says. Has to say. Oh, and I think this was another f- good sign because although this is a Mrs. Hughes sort of area, um, no, no, no. The kitchen, the, the the kitchen is very firmly under under the, under the, under the butler. Under yeah, the butler. So the maids and so on are, are Mrs. Hughes', Hughes uh, domain. Domain, but. Ki- well, ev- I mean, ultimately everything in the house, including Mrs. Hughes, comes under the butler's mm. uh, over Watch oversee. But, partic- but but the kitchen, yeah. But sure. again, this, this shows a really good sensitive and knowing side of an established member of the uh, the, the, the the staff um, with Mr. Carson acknowledging he's noticed, he's not mentioned anything, but now it needs to be nipped in the bud. And it shows sensitivity, yeah. And and Mrs. Hughes showed that with also with regard to, to sending um, Mr. Bates to the doctor when so in the last episode mm-hmm. with the with the uh, say with the limp and all that sort yeah. of thing. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, it does show that there was a, there was caring and there was although there wasn't a national health service uh, around at that time and doctors cost money, but it was the responsibility of the the house mm. to yeah. cover. Yes. The costs and the well-being. Yes, of course, Mrs. Patmore is concerned as well. What good is a cook who can't see? Who can't see? You'd probably just need a pair of glasses. Well, we shall we find we out. Shall find we shall out find out in, in, in due course. But the very final piece of the um, uh, the episode, which so the, the levity and they did that balance drama with comedy really well, and um, the dowager is there announcing the winners of the said flower show and it comes down to the best blooms in the village yes, and so sees her name yes and this is after being tr- heavily hinted by everyone including her son that that she perhaps ought to release the judging committee from any sense of obligation, obligation. to award her the bloom but uh, the, the award for the bloom but, but clearly she, uh, but she uh, then Sort of, uh, sort of ignores it. So there's a little bit of a <sighs> moment, and then she announced Mr. Mosley Senior yeah. wins um, the, 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 the the cup. The, the cup, and he is very taken aback because he wasn't expecting to win. Um, so, and they didn't have just participation awards then, did they? <laughs> no one, no, no. Everyone gets a cup. Um, yeah, you get a cup. So again, that shows that the Dowager, sort of, although it is like trying to do a U-turn in the Titanic, um, is changing her ways. When I mean, she's been, she's done things in a certain way all the time, and there's always an expectation. Say, so, right, you do this, do that, do the other, and say, so, and then everything comes with, sort of, that's the conclusion. We've done it, always done it this way, and this will always come out. But now she's realizing sometimes change. It's good. Yes. And I think she saw the gratitude and appreciation with Mr. Mosley for it's like something which was completely yeah. utterly unexpected. Yeah. And the the reality is is that apart from elements of pride and stubbornness, uh I think, you know, Vi- uh, Violet got more from her sacrifice than she lost. Yes. 
very much so. Uh, although she, she, she did cling on to the cup a little bit longer than needed. Yeah, it did have to be a little bit prized. Out of her, <laughs> oh, that's a lovely out ad. Of her <laughs> but over, overall, I absolutely adore this episode. It, it, so there, a lot happened, and I think it was really nice, because previous in the previous episodes, it's been like the run-up of the characters of the house, so it has been very much upstairs and downstairs. But now, it's there is a lot of enmeshment, so... Yes. So this um, might reflect the structure of our podcast moving going forward. forward. It might not, because we're very fickle. We're very fickle, and we do such little research that it's very much off on the on the fly. But I am really, I I am so loving rewatching Downton. Also, I, I'm on a Downton thread in on the Reddit forum, and uh, there is a documentary series on Paramount. I need to seek out, and it's about the Dollar Princesses. Oh. Um, so, which is based around the backstory. Well, it's, it's not all based on Downton, but it's it, it, it's it's where the motivation comes from the Cora character, yeah. Uh, yeah. and and sort of the backstories of that. So, I'm sort of quite intrigued to go and sort of seek that out. Mm. Anyway, dear listeners, what did you think of episode five of series one? Please. Do you want to tell us? Do you want to please do tell please us? Do tell. Inbox us. Please like, follow, subscribe, buy us a coffee or something. Yes. Uh, and and. and <laughs> You can now uh, watch our podcasts on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube audio only, so you don't actually have to look at us. But but as an alternative way, you can you can find us find out the Antique Dust channel on, on YouTube. And we're on all major social networks uh, at uh, Antique Dust. So please do feel free to inbox us. We would love to hear from you. So it's me, Jonathan, signing off. Farewell. And it's me, Rob, saying goodbye. Bye bye.